Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to my channel. If you remember a few videos back, I shared all of the blogging tools and resources that I use for my website, as well as like my social media, email, affiliate marketing, making money online, my clients. I mean, I just shared all of the tools and resources that I use. So if you are interested in watching that video, I will include it in the description bar down below for you guys. But in that video, I mentioned that sadly, I had to cut out the scene where I talked about all of my plugins and I just did a quick run through of what plugins I have on my website, but I didn't get the opportunity to explain to you guys why I have those plugins and why I think that you guys need some of those plugins. So I have got some plugins that are more so for appearance of my website, you know, like adding an Instagram feed on my website in my footer. I don't think that's a necessary plugin that you guys need, but there are some other ones that I would definitely recommend that you guys have on your WordPress website. So if you have a WordPress blog and you've been wondering about plugins, what ones to include, I'm going to answer all of your questions in this video. So let's just go ahead and jump to my computer and we'll get started. Before we really get into this though, I do want to tell you that you do not want to have a ton of plugins on your website. If you've got a lot of plugins on your website right now that you're not currently using, it's probably better that you just remove them, deactivate them, or delete them because plugins do take up a decent amount of space on your website, especially if you have a lot of them. And the more space that they take up, the slower your website load time will be. So if your website is loading really, really slow right now, that's not good for your SEO. It's not good for your user experience. And it may be because you have too many plugins on your your website. So the ones that I have activated on my website are the ones that I actually use. And I want to share those with you guys today. So the first one that I have right up top here is anti-spam. And can I tell you a little story? So I used to have my website on Bluehost. That was my hosting server when I first got started. And then I switched to GoDaddy. I've told you guys that a couple of times. Well, when I had Bluehost, I actually had a spam blocker or site security or something with Bluehost that caught all of my spam comments. And when I switched to GoDaddy, I was like, you know what? I don't need that anymore more because I didn't notice any spam comments. I didn't think it was a problem. Of course, I didn't notice that there were any spam comments because I had something that was actually blocking them. So once I switched to GoDaddy and I didn't have that anymore, I got so many spam comments that I just couldn't deal with it. So within a week of realizing how many spam comments I got, I ended up doing my research and that's when I downloaded anti-spam. So actually, if I go to the comment section, it will tell you how many spam comments it has blocked since it's been activated. And mine has blocked 24,000, 24,000 spam comments on my website. So I do like anti-spam. Spam, they do a great job. The next plugin that I have is Broken Link Checker. So there are a lot of factors that go into your SEO, and one of those is having broken links on your website. If you have got broken links that lead to 404 pages, that isn't good at all, honestly. And that's just bad for your user experience in general, because if you are recommending a page to someone and then they click on it and it's going nowhere, that's just not good for you. So a broken link checker will actually do a run through of my website, I think every 72 hours. So every three days and figure out if there are any new broken links on my website. The next plugin that I have is ConvertKit right here. So ConvertKit is my email provider. You do not need this ConvertKit plugin unless you have ConvertKit. And the reason why I have this plugin is because it makes it so the landing pages can actually be hosted on my website. So let me show you what I am talking about. This graphic right here on my blog post, if I click on this to download the 30 day Instagram challenge, it is going to pull up a new landing page. Now this landing page was designed on ConvertKit and works with ConvertKit. But if you check out the URL up here, it is actually my website. So that is one thing that I like about ConvertKit. You can actually host landing pages on your website instead of through ConvertKit. I just think that's a sweet feature. So that's exactly why I have the ConvertKit plugin on my site. The yeah, next one is Essential Grid. And actually, I should have told you guys this from the beginning. All of these plugins are free except for two of them. So there are only two plugins that I have purchased. The first one is Essential Grid, and the second one is Social Warfare, which I will get to. So Essential Grid, the reason that I got this plugin is because of Melissa Griffin. Honestly, she convinced me to get it. I was creating a free resource library on my website, and I didn't know how to do that. So with Essential Grid, I can have my free resource library on my website. So let me show you what that looks like. So this is my VIP free resource library available on my website. It's just got a lot of free downloads and stuff that you guys can use. You just need to become a VIP. So I do have a link in the description where you can join my VIP team and then you get access to this free resource library because it is password protected. But what you can do with Essential Grid is you can add these images, set it up with how many photos you want to go across. And then if you click on this download button, what it's going to do, it's going to open a new page that has the 
download available for someone to use, which is perfect for things like a resource library. But I also use Essential Grid on my blog page. So I didn't like the blog page that came with my theme. I just didn't think it was that user friendly and I wanted people to be able to see more blog posts and easily select the one that they wanted to use. So this right here is actually made possible by Essential Grid. So if someone wants to read this blog post, they just click on this link button and it's going to open the blog post. It's that easy. So I really do love Essential Grid. It's really, really cool and I use it all the time. So that is one of the plugins that I purchased and it was a good decision to purchase it. The uh, next plugin we have is EWWW Image Optimizer. So again, this goes into your SEO as well as your site speed. So if you are not optimizing your images or compressing your images before you upload them to your website, they're probably slowing down your website and that's hurting your SEO in the long run. So EWWW Image Optimizer compresses your images as soon as you upload them so that they are smaller size so that they load a little bit faster. So I really do like EWW Image Optimizer, EWWW, there's three W's, Image Optimizer, and I would recommend that you guys definitely have this one on your website as well as Broken Link Checker. Both of those are two essential ones that I would have on your website. The next one is Instagram feed. So if we scroll down to the very bottom of my website, right here you will see my Instagram feed and you can select how many images you want to appear, how you want them to appear. So I just chose one line of six images. And then if you click on any of these images, it's going to open a new tab and then you can actually see that Instagram photo. So that's more of a cosmetic ad that I had on my website, but I do like Instagram feed. It works really well. The next one is public post preview. And this is only necessary if you are doing guest posts on your website or if you want to share a blog post before it is live with someone else. So I've actually had this happen before where I've written guest blog posts for other people and then they try to send me the preview link, but unless it is live on their website, you can't see it. So with public post preview, you can actually create a link that other people can see, they can get access to before that blog post is launched. So I really do like this plugin. I mean, it's a very simple plugin, but it works well. Then we have redirection and honestly, it does exactly what it says. If you have got a link that is then broken on your website or maybe you want to redirect that link to a different link on your website, you can do that through redirection. So I honestly do not use that one that much, but there are definitely a few pages on my website that I didn't want those broken links to appear. So I had to redirect them to a new page and that was the easiest way to do it instead of going into all of the pages on my website that had that link. Next, schema. So I feel like there are a decent chunk of these plugins that are meant for SEO purposes and the exact same thing with schema. So if you know anything about schema data, it's good for your SEO. It's basically just telling Google more information and it adds more markup to your website. So it marks your about page and your contact page and it makes sure that those are specified so Google doesn't have to decide, eh, I think this is their about page. They know because you marked up their website. So this is especially important if you have a business website and you want to tag your address, your phone number, your email address. You want to make sure that you do that with schema. So actually I'll show you what this looks like over here on the left-hand side. I'm just going to click on schema right here. And on this general tab, just like I said, you can select your about page. You can select your contact page here. Knowledge graph. This is where you get to decide if you are a person or an organization. You can select the name of your blog, or if you're using your own name, you want to enter that here, your website, as well as your logo so that it pulls up the correct logo when someone is searching that on Google. So that is one of the ones that I would say must have have to have on your website, set it up once, select the appropriate pages and your name and website and logo, and that's it. Okay, where were we at? Simple social icons. So back to my website right here, these little icons that appear at the bottom, those are made available by Simple Social Icons. So that's what that does right there, nothing too fancy. Then we have got Social Warfare and Social Warfare Pro. So this is the second plugin that I told you guys about that I paid for. I paid for Social Warfare Pro, obviously. Social Warfare is available for free, if you just download it through WordPress, totally fine. But I went for the paid version for one reason and it's because my website for some reason was having problems pulling up Pinterest images and people weren't allowed to pin my blog posts and you know how much I believe in the power of Pinterest and if people couldn't pin my blog post, that was a huge problem. So I ended up getting access to their pro version because within their pro version, you can specify what image you want to go to Pinterest. So it will pick one specific image and then you can specify your Pinterest description as well as you can do the same thing first, your social media description, Twitter, your Twitter description. I'm 
not sure if you can do your Facebook description as well, but that is a nice plugin to have. But the other benefit to Social Warfare is that it adds these share icons on the side or you can have them on the top of your website. So you can decide where they appear, what ones you want to appear, as well as if you want to share how many times it's been shared or not. So Social Warfare is pretty cool. It's very customizable, but it's basically just a sharing option for your pages and posts on your website. Then we have got Tracking Code Manager. I wouldn't say that this one is a necessity, but I use it for a wide variety of things and I also use it in a lot of my tutorials because Tracking Code Manager gives you access to the head of your website without actually going into your code and messing up your website. So I have crashed my website twice. One of the times was because I went in and I messed with the code and I did it wrong. So Tracking Code Manager makes it so you don't actually have that problem. You can add code to the head of your website, which is just within your coding, and you're good to go. Totally fine. So Tracking Code Manager is great if you need to do Pinterest verification, if you need to verify your Google Search Console, you Google Analytics, or even a Facebook tag, you can do that all through Tracking Code Manager. The yeah, next one we have is W3 Total Cache. And I would say that this one is probably another necessity that I would recommend that you guys have on your your website. And here's why. If you know what a cache is, so when you visit a website, your website browser will hold information about that website so that the next time you go to visit it, it will load faster. It's not like they have to reload all the data on their website. They only have to load the new data. But if your cache gets so big and so full, really, sometimes it won't realize when there is new data and you have to clear your cache on your website. And this is a problem that I had a year ago, guys. I went months and I didn't know that my website wasn't loading any new information. So I was launching blog post after blog post every single week. And for, I think it was almost three months, my website didn't load any new information. So I was promoting these blog posts on Instagram and my audience actually couldn't get access to them because my cache was messed up. And all I had to do was download W3 Total Cache and clear my cache. That's all I had to do. It was so simple. So now every few months I go in and I clear my cache just to make sure that my website is loading for everyone out there. But I do recommend W3 Total Cache, especially if you notice that maybe your website's not pulling up new information. And the last plugin that I have on my website down here is at Yoast SEO. And I feel like this is pretty self-explanatory. If you have a WordPress website, you need Yoast SEO. It allows you to do some things within your search engine optimization that you absolutely need to do if you want to appear on Google. So I swear by Yoast SEO and I also include it in a lot of my video tutorials. Now I'm hoping that you guys understand why I had to cut that out of the original video because it was just so much information. I mean, I do have a decent amount of plugins on my website, but I wanted to give you an in-depth look at what they actually do and why I have them. It's not like I've got plugins on my website for fun. They are actually all functional and I do use them to run and operate my website. So if you like this video and found it helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below and I'll see you guys back here in another video soon. Bye guys.